it takes up no space. All right, so. So what I'm trying to do right now is basically I've got this UI screen. Uh, I'm basically trying to make the end stage. I'm trying to make all the placeholder widgets that Adam will be able to come back and skin for end stage stuff and try to get it working. So basically redoing what is the end game UI stuff right now sans the like I don't think we'll get to the options menus, but everything else I think inside of the stage specifically for missions might be able to get through and gray box out all the UI for it and set it all up so I've got all these little widgets and I've got them all attached to the screen and then I'm going through and trying to rig all that garbage up right so The idea being that, you know, I can I can make it so next time Adam jumps in here, he will have plenty of things to work with and have it all organized and ready to go for him. So that, because we need to get missions uh, functional, right? That needs to be kind of the next thing. Shifting nodes around, doing the same, yeah. Now this is good, this is actually progress that I've actually got. Because I can do a lot if <laughs> these. this is all in like the the blueprints and all that. And this is just a bunch of skeleton work that I won't really have to do again. So that's, it's good. It's good shifting, it's good, you know, pencil pushing around at the moment. It's not bad pencil pushing, so I'm okay with it. And I also have energy drinks today, so I'm a little bit more awake and functional. Okay, so we're going to get rid of everything. Proper setup. Are you are you complaining about work, Karakin? Is that is that what's going on here? Because complaining about work is what I do. So that's it's kind of my thing. All right, so we were able to turn everything off except for the clock, which is exactly what we wanted to happen. All right, so what we want All right, that's excellent. Yeah, you see, that's 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 called complaining about work, and and that is that is definitely my thing. So, yeah, so the emote is proper properly used. So 
so what I need to do is all right I've got the the bones of this stuff set up so I need the clock to actually work so how should I have the clock work right right now I've got a clock widget and it's got stuff that I can do with it if I can stop it and set the presentation and update the clock text what am I doing right now with the clock like I think it's got a graph and it's got okay so the I could have all the widgets do their own thing set themselves visible set themselves invisible that's probably what I should do right like the widgets should just automatically work and I shouldn't have the screen do a whole bunch of crazy bullshit to make it work it should just you know, I shouldn't be doing this. I should be having all the individual widgets set themselves up properly. So why don't we just remove the clock here, remove this here, and the end stage clock should basically disable itself. So on construction, it'll just set its visibility to false. Otherwise, it's going to do the thing. And yeah, having a decent workflow, I don't know. It's it's really surprising in places where you'd expect things to be real locked down and tight and working properly. Usually, it's the opposite. We get Amazon. I was expecting a lot more, a lot more security stuff to be locked down with a game development studio, but alas, that is definitely not the case. Okay, so I should have the widgets themselves always maintain their own situation. So what this should do is we should be listening for game state changes that are thrown by the arena level. Right, that's what I should do. Let's go to level edge actions, so set in stage. We should do set current game state in the dash can level actor. So if we go to the level actor, we're gonna call game state changed. Okay, so what we want to do is go to our stage clock. Uh, we want to get this. Um, we've got the score change events bound. We want the bind event to what? The game state change. And I'll add a function which will be set for game state. And let's go ahead and break the game state data and pass this in. So set for game state, which should take a state. All right, this is this is actually going to work really nicely. So it'll be like, okay, why is the clock not showing up? Well, the clock should be showing up, and the clock controls itself, and it's all event driven. Ah, uh, this is this is going to be a lot easier for me to freaking deal with.
Okay, so the thing here is we're gonna need to snag the current mission, the current stage. Um, and when we get the current stage, we need to know if there is any time limit set on this thing. Um, so is there a get current mission that is not super ridiculous? Got gameplay utils. Game utils. What do we got? Get current. Get current stage stats. Get current stage. So what we want to know is if there is a timed condition for this. So we want to know if it's timed and we also want to know if we want to know the next time is it a count up or a count down So I'm trying to think about this. Um, so we're also going to need to get the current mission, right? Because the current mission. Okay, so the question is, how are we going to do a countdown clock? What would be the conditions? <laughs> now you're complaining about coworkers? Man, it's like you're a full-fledged member of the workforce now, Karakan. Congratulations. <laughs> now you can bitch about all the people. If you spend another another 10 years and you, and you earn a bunch of money, then you can complain about all the poor people too. And then you're a true member of the workforce. <laughs> Step one on the road to being heartless and soulless. Congratulations. You will join the ranks of everyone someday. No, the... Uh, you always bitch about humans. Well, that's what dragons do. They always complain about humans being jerks. Like, man, I was just sitting here chilling in this cave. I've been in this cave for the last, you know, 200 years. And then this, this asshole who just thinks he's everything in this shiny suit of armor comes by. And he's like, well, I need, I need to kill you because you're evil. And you're like, dude, I just eat sheep, all right? Achieved that ages ago. So the question is, what should a countdown clock do? Uh, a countdown clock should... 
I'm trying to imagine lots of scenarios. The countdown clock should show what will end the match soonest. So if it's a mission clock, it should show the mission clock. If it's a stage clock, it should show the stage clock. So basically, what will that be? It's going to be anything that wins the mission or loses the mission and the countdown start and end. Basically, the countdown end is sooner than otherwise. So it's going to be the min countdown end. So I might want to do this in C++ because um, it'll be soon. It'll be maybe a little bit easier for me to program out in that way. So what it should be is we go to Game Utils. I'll make a new thing. And what should it be called? It should be called something. So let's see, it'll be git. Next clock end. Git clock status would be a better one. Git mission clock status. Best fantasy story ever? Oh no. It works. It works. <laughs> Let me tell you a story. The end. Alright. So, we need the clock status. So basically we want is countdown. So we're going to use multiple return values, which is basically you turn, you pass references in, and then you can get multiple things out. So let's, um, let's have show clock um, is countdown Maybe I should use my enums for this. So clock type should be something like that. I hate Skype. Gotta grab that and animate over. <laughs> make a make an, a a thirty a twenty second animated short of <laughs> just some dude. I can just imagine some generic knight figure like, well, you're evil. <laughs> just like, dude, fuck off. He's like, all right, fine. And then they just sit there and the knight pulls out a, a flask of ale and just sits at the mouth of the cave. <laughs> all right, so we want to know if it's a countdown clock. Uh, so if it's a countdown clock, we want countdown start and countdown end. And I think that's pretty much it. So let's implement that thing that we need. All right, so show clock is going to be false is countdown is going to be false countdown start zero and countdown end zero when you're passing references into a function you need to initialize them or at least you should because it's real easy to have bugs where you think you set a variable but you didn't so now it's kind of in an undefined state which is worse than anything the term undefined state in programming is literally you have no idea what it is, so it could be anything. It might work, but we don't know what it'll do. That's worse than 
everything else. Because if we know it's in the wrong state, then we at least know it's broken. <laughs> and if we know if it's in the right state, it's in the right state. But if it's an undefined state, what, what's your program supposed to do with it? All right, so we're going to need the mission data. So get current mission. Get current stage. Let's see if I've got the mission man already. Can I just call Get current stage direct. Yeah, that's what we want. Okay, so I have all the mission information and everything like that. So what we need to go through, what are our rules for this? Yeah, it's one of those things um, that is kind of interesting and doesn't always happen until it happens. Um, so think about this thought scenario. So you are trying to make a purchase. Um, so... A customer is trying to buy a sword with a microtransaction. So um, I'm playing World of Warcraft and I want to buy armor for my horse and I have to spend real dollars to get this. So you have the client, which is the, you know, the game client, calls the back-end server and says, hey, I want to make this purchase. Here's my information on how to make the purchase, etc. So okay, that game server on the back-end goes, all right, cool, um, let's do a few things. Um, so we have an external commerce provider which actually does money and our game server doesn't do that. So what we do is we call the external commerce provider and we say, okay, I want to purchase this thing. So if the call comes back failed, like, okay, the guy's credit card was declined. Great. Okay. That's fine. Um, credit card declined. So no purchase. Don't do anything. Great. All right. If it comes back as a yes, all right, excellent. Um, we are just going to write to our game database that you now have horse armor for your horse and you can ride around with it. So awesome. So you've got that. But what if it never comes back? What if it times out? Right? Like, what if, you know, it? you just never get a response? So what do you do? Do you not give the person the horse armor okay let's say you just pessimistically say no no horse armor for you and then you know on that guy's monthly bill it comes up that the transaction actually succeeded but you know they just never got back to you well that's a problem you know you just took their money so all right let's be optimistic so if it never returns, we will just grant horse armor to people. All right, well, now the commerce provider goes down. Like, they are they got a bug in their code, and they charge people. I mean, they don't charge people, and they, like, time out. Uh, now you will never take people's money, but people get their horse armor. And that comes out real fast where people figure that out. So all of a sudden, your commerce server goes down, or somebody causes it to go down and then everybody can go click their stuff and get stuff for free. Uh, so <laughs> it's stuff like that where it's um, it can be difficult.
So of course to solve those problems usually what you do is you have a repair system go through and fix everything. So what you would what you would do is you'd basically create a transaction ID that's a unique ID. Uh, you would save that to your database that you started this unique transaction. Um, when you did the invoice processing and sent the request to bill somebody for something that would write a transaction log when it completed the transaction with what it did. And if there's any miscommunications, you would never grant horse armor and you would have something come through five minutes later, some actual amount of time, it would go through and it would say, oh, well, the transactions, you know, transaction 55 was never verified. So we're going to call our commerce provider and say, hey, what about transaction 55? It would come back and it'd say, oh, yeah, we, we actually did not bill for that. So you would then not give the horse armor or say, oh, yeah, we billed for that. So it, you know, actually go implement that. And when your systems are all screwed up, basically, you'd just be like, well, you'll get your horse armor in five minutes. And at that point, it's a customer service issue. And you just tell your customer service people that, you know, hey, it's not a big deal. You know, just tell them it's coming and give them some free, you know, give them some free dollars in the meantime to make them shut the hell up. So that's um, one of the things that basically um, at one point Amazon DynamoDB had a massive outage due to some uh, metadata service cascading failures. Uh, it even took down the security cameras in Virginia because all the systems were all in interconnected. And what, um, what they did to mitigate it is they turned off the eventual consistency flag for uh, read requests. So basically how modern databases work is you can read from a database and get like, okay, what's the user's, how many monsters has a user killed? Oh, and you read it and it's got, okay, five monsters. Great. All right. So then you want to say like, well, he just killed a monster. So what I want you to do is I want to write six monsters to the database because he just killed one right now. But read consistency basically means that when you read that five, you're guaranteed that that five is what's actually current in the database and if you have some sort of lock over that piece of data you can then be assured that okay five is the right number so I can save six and I have a lock on this everything's fine because you acquire the lock read the data write the data unlock and you're guaranteed that no two things will touch the same data at the same time so Instead of getting two people saying, oh, we killed a monster, both reading five, both writing six, and having the result be six, as opposed to reading five, writing six, reading six, writing seven. So they turned off that read flag. Yeah. So locking algorithms that do things, what's called optimistic locking. So instead of doing a read such as a lock read write unlock you can read and then write and check so you can say okay um, set this value to six if the value was five and therefore you don't actually have to lock the database so you can it's called optimistic locking where basically you read and try to write and fail and then you read again and try to write again and fail and read and try to write again and you'll eventually succeed because um, if multiple people are trying this one of them always wins so it doesn't matter how many there are it will eventually work so when they turn that off basically all these guys that are doing this eventual consistency stuff are fucked. anyway databases are complicated monsters I shouldn't say they're complicated monsters. They're very simple in how they operate. 
But as we all know, simple systems can become incredibly complex when you're trying to do things that are special. Which is one of the funny things where people were asking me at one point, hey, how come the database call returns a boxed Boolean value for if it succeeded? And I'm like, well, because it's uh, it's a yes, no, or maybe. And they're like, what the hell do you mean maybe? You're like, well, maybe it worked. They're like, god damn it. And I'm like, no, 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 think about it. Like it might have say tried to save, but it failed, you know, but we don't know if it failed. So that's why you need to check those. Anyway. Okay, so what are the rules here? We want the closest clock to work. So, let's see. Rendering in the right resolution aspect ratio. Oh, Jesus. Nothing worse than waiting for like a four hour job to finish and just being like, layer zero was invisible. Fuck. And then re rendering it and then being like, oh, layer five was invisible. Guess I'll have to wait four more hours. And then it's even worse if there's some instability in there where sometimes something will fail. So there's like a 5% chance that it'll fail anyway. So be like, well, I think I got everything working and it randomly didn't work because some race condition. All right, let's look at our objects. So we have our win conditions, which are F conditions. All right, so. Well, <laughs> yeah, fighting, fighting fires. Well, that's kind of one of the things is it's really important to, that somebody fixes all that crap. That was always one of the reasons people would trust me with everything at places I've been would be it wouldn't matter if it was my job or my area of expertise I wouldn't let anything stand in the way of me actually getting my work done so you know if it was a person place or thing that needed to be changed they got moved out of my way so I'd be able to get what I needed done done that <laughs> I heard it I heard it that it was mentioned at EA when I was there that they would just basically if there was something that needed to be done and nobody was there, they would just assign it to me. 
because <laughs> one of the producers said, well, you know, Kirk, Kirk would have won Vietnam, so just just give him that system. He'll figure out how to solve it. And if he can't solve it, he'll find somebody else who will solve it for him. So <laughs> if we don't have a solution, just give it to him. He'll, he'll just make it happen, and we'll just handle the blowback somehow. <laughs> so it was, it was fun. You're not paid en paid enough to do that, and yeah. well, then what you need to do is convince everybody that you should be paid more. All right. So we want to know if the condition is okay. So. What is our comparison enum? So if this is less than equal to or I guess I should do a switch on condition dot condition. Okay, so we'll say we have a countdown and countdown we're checking the countdown end. So if countdown end is less than what the I need to know the stage time, don't I? Let me see if I have that on the stage.
All right, I'm not really sure. I need the information for this. I need the mission. I need the mission time, and I need the stage time. Good morning, Lucas. Thank you for thank you for hosting, Lucas. It's very much appreciated. Yeah, I'm just working on the mission UI. Twenty degrees Celsius. I don't even know how hot that is. What seventy degrees? That's like nice temperature. Like, what are you talking about? You're dying? I think that's it's like oh man, it's like the perfect temperature outside. How awful. Alright, so let's go to our arena level. I think has the victory conditions. Let me just go check that. Alright, so it's this is condition met in the level utils. All right, so that's what we're looking at. Let's grab our stage start. I should probably make some functions here for getting the variables that I need.
All right, so we'll start getting all these implemented. It's, it's six. How do you do the degree symbol? Do you have that on your keyboard? No. Usually you just usually you just don't. Alright, let me see. Um, we will need Nah, she was just starting out. She was like, easy, easy, Lucas. How you saying hi? You know, obviously things are going off the chain here. That's always how. She's just been playing a bunch of uh, a bunch of StarCraft. She was just calling you casual. That's all. All right. So we've got our mission mission times, I guess. So we can do our things. So. All right. So this is on the stage win condition. So what we want to do is the duration. The minimum duration is going to be this like max. So what we want to do is we want to let's count down the clock. Let's do float duration. It's going to be stage now minus stage start I guess I should do time left which is going to be the stage start plus the condition dot threshold and we want to do minus the The current difference, so that's that would be stage now minus stage start. So if what time left is less than min min left, then we have a uh, yeah our countdown start. It's going to be stage start. Our countdown end is going to be stage start plus threshold. And we're going to say our min left equals time left. Is countdown is also going to be true. Because countdowns are always true. No, has countdown is true. Do min countdown left. You play StarCraft? No, <laughs> it's a good game. Like I played, I played a whole bunch of StarCraft when I was growing up, and when StarCraft Two came out, I played a whole bunch of that as well. What the fuck is this? Oh man. <laughs> but uh, the problem with StarCraft 2 when it came out is that basically, like, I placed into, you know, Diamond Tier and I was getting first place Diamond Tier. And just the game was too damn stressful. Just because. You had to play every game like the same way. You couldn't just trash around and make a whole bunch of, you know, Hellions or some other stupid crap unit and, you know, have fun with the game. Everything was just like, yeah, I gotta really stress out and do this. And it was difficult to, because, you know, I started playing like fours, randoms, and other things to try to not be all, 
having to be perfect on everything all the time. But after a while, it was like I couldn't play it because it was just too stressful. Because, you know, it's like if I wanted to win the game, I had to just be absolutely perfect and play exactly the same strategy every time. And if I missed anything, you're just screwed because that's how the game is. And I probably would have had more fun if I wasn't as good at, at it. But then it was also a problem finding people to play with on teams. Because it was always, like, I got my brother and I was playing with him. And just every single game we would lose, it would be because he hadn't done something right. And that was always, like, really annoying. And it'd be like, where the fuck is your army, man? It's like, well, I haven't made any units yet. And I'm like, you should already have five marauders and five marines and a medic, you son of a bitch. Like, rage quit, throw a computer. You know, <laughs> how many times do I have to tell you this? So it was... It was a bit annoying, um, to be honest. So, I don't know. Uh, there was not a version of StarCraft on the PlayStation. There was, there was a StarCraft on the Nintendo 64, and it ran like complete pile of trash. Do we care about less than equal twos with time? I don't think so. Yeah, I think this is, that's trash. So it's gonna be greater than or greater than equal to or equal to. And if that's true, then we'll set our, our conditions there. Okay, so. So if loss conditions greater than, greater than, equal to, okay, so same thing for that guy. So there's never a count up timer unless that's a thing. Okay, so we don't need that. All right, so if has countdown, otherwise we're going to say Let me see, if there's any time comparisons, I guess that's what we should have. No, we need to go through all the victory conditions and if the victory can, not, not the victory conditions, but the tier conditions and see if there's a timer. And that'll be if we have a count up. So I have a bool for has a time related tier.
Uh, this is complicated. So I need even more functions here. Well, it depends on the game. Like some games, your team members can only actively help you. So when you lose, it's not just like your team members suck or something. But when games get pretty competitive, especially when people need to work together, it can be frustrating. Such as, there are games where you don't actually actively, like a game like Go Fish, right, where you take a card from somebody else, is an example of where you can actually actively, like, sabotage other players. And games like that where, yeah. Because that's kind of one of the things is, if you as a good player would be able to use all the resources on the, on the map and defeat the other two other players, like if it's 2v2 and you have like a not very good player in your team, if StarCraft was aligned in such a way that you could use all the resources that that other guy isn't using, you know, like where that person could only contribute, so you're like, all right, don't, you know, you can still play with me. I'm good enough that I can, you know, I can use all the extra stuff that you're not.